Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and what I'm going to be sharing with you today is how I will be building a ship, a fighting ship that would be suitable to play for this uh, particular difficulty setting of very hard difficulty and if you know anything about Starfield and you are playing it in very hard difficulty one of the key thing is that you know the ship fighting all right the combat for ship is typically very very difficult if you are using something which is like a desktop frontier or even something which is less powerful because they hit really really hard so in order to mitigate that let's just uh, start here first with my character here as you can see here i have this my character which is level 84 and she is in fact on her new game plus three which means that she has already passed the unity three times and every time you pass unity everything gets reset which means that you know you don't have anything no credits no item and you'll be given just this uh, two ship here which is the frontier of course the stock ship and starborn guardian and <clears throat> let me just uh, simply put it this way this starborn guardian would not be able to survive most of the ship combat in very hard difficulty and on top of that because my character here if you look at her background okay she is in fact a bounty hunter right and she is in fact a wanted person so meaning that having this trait being a wanted person she will always get bounty hunter chasing her throughout the space so just uh, to put it uh, simply put i have been avoiding for her to get into any kind of combat in very hard difficulty for ship combat especially because there's no way she can survive and the reason that i'm avoiding it is because i play her as perma dead character which means that she only have one life die once and i will delete her as simple as that all right now let's move on to the prerequisite of this uh, build first of all of course you're gonna have to have this at least uh, 400k of credit or close to 400k and it is not so difficult to actually uh, get this amount of credit it took me like you know probably within the space of uh, one day to accumulate this amount from zero by just simply doing side quests doing bounty hunting quests and if you play on a very hard difficulty you'll get sent to hunting some of the like say pirates or even ecliptics that will drop so many high level weapon and those weapon cost a lot of money so what you what i did was just simply sell off everything and by the end of the day i was able to collect almost 400k which means now that she have the credit to build a proper ship for very hard difficulty and then the next very important one she is already very high level so this is pretty much uh we are talking about building a you know end game type of ship so the first prerequisite piloting skill needs to be at rank number four and of course uh static starship design need to be number four as well and those are the mandatory ones but ideally you should also invest in this which is the engine system all right rank number four and starship engineering rank number four because this will provide a lot of defense and repair system mitigation damage mitigation for the ship okay and ideally you should also invest into what sort of weapon system that you like to use okay and it is not that difficult to actually upgrade uh, the skills for ship you see here this is a vanguard flight simulator okay all of the skill that i have shown you just now can be upgraded by doing the simulation there okay because whatever that you do in the flight simulator will count towards uh, the skill point addition here okay and another important one as well because we'll be spending a lot of credit on buying very expensive ship parts it is definitely very useful to have this skill max out as well and this is definitely a lot easier to level up you can even do this uh, very early on 
make sure that you have rank number four so that you can get 20% discount. All right. Now the prerequisite has been covered. Let's just proceed to our ship. Okay. I'd like to clarify that in order to achieve this build, uh, I would need to fly her to several locations. All right. To buy different parts. It would be ideal I, if I can actually just simply build the ship from one location but unfortunately that is not the case. So her first trip would be heading towards uh, buying some of the basic component for the ship itself. Okay. Eight point reached. Now she's uh, in space already. So let's just travel to our first location which is in the soul system and the planet of titan and this is in fact the home of uh, nova galactic shipyard so let's just uh, set course and jump there switching over to standard Five, you are entering united colony space please maintain course and prepare to be scanned right Okay, now she can land. New Homestead, that's the name of the place. Oops, she need to put on her helmet. <laughs> because this is a Mars system. Okay. Done. Okay. Welcome to New Homestead. Oh, Please okay. make your way to the building. Just gonna Stay skip safe. this. Any first visit here in her new game plus hey, three all right so okay, let's just no have problem. a look uh need to get the first component ship builder okay the basis of our build will be definitely using this uh, frontier here which is definitely very very weak okay and let's just first look at the landing gear and this is what I would recommend to use. And the reason for this is that because uh, you see here, look at the lander thrust. It has uh, a total number of four and with the hull of four, which means that uh, this is uh, the strongest and also the most powerful landing gear that you can have in the game. Okay. Which will allow you to just use probably like two of it. I think should be enough. So instead of uh, so many landing gear, so we can safely delete this. Okay. The stock landing gear. And in fact, I'm just gonna delete uh, the rest of the unwanted component, even including the cockpit and everything else. So we're just gonna start the build with very basic component. And in fact, I would retain this uh, central component here, which is the habitat module, right? The reason is that because this habitat module is unique. As you can see the name there, it says Nova Galactic Frontier 2 plus 2 times 1, which means that if you delete this uh, habitat module, and you quit the screen you want to get it back it will not be available anymore because this is unique to frontier only so i'm just going to keep it for sentimental value so first thing we just gonna add is that i am a big fan of nova galactic so i will be using nova galactic uh where's the cockpit okay and i always love this one because it has a very sleek and realistic look to it okay and then we're just gonna look for let's say i'm hoping that this guy have the reactor that i want okay so the core thing is that for a ship the source of power for the ship is always the core reactor and unfortunately i don't think the reactor that I want is available here because as you can see here right 
this is in fact uh if you look at it this sf40 is in fact the highest ranking for power generation power generation at 40 out of 40 all right but i'm not going to be using this one and the main reason for it is that because if you look at the hull number there it is just 1003 uh hull i mean strength which means that i need something which is higher i need a much stronger uh reactor so what i will do is just probably skip this for now from here okay and just gonna assemble back the ship and we will need to be heading towards another location to get the rest of the component so what i just gonna do is that uh i don't need this actually just put on the basic things so that this ship can fly Okay. Need some uh, braces here while we are at this location. No bigalactic braces. Okay, so that I can put this landing gear. And then of course we're gonna need engine where's the engine okay I'll put back the cargo and let me see the graph drive where was it the original one you can locate your deleted graph drive by just simply looking at this plus sign here okay so graph drive there and we add uh, the reactor, the original reactor, also this one. Okay. So what else is missing? Okay. Fuel, of course. Fuel tank. Also the stock one. Okay. What else is missing? Oh, no engine put back the original engine as well because we need to fly to another location okay. done okay just confirm this or oh, is there anything else I want to buy here yes some uh, structure is uh, this one and this one okay and perhaps I should be able to buy I don't know let's just uh, save this first and then fly over to our next location to get uh, the reactor and the gravity drive. Should I warm up the engines? So just remember this, for any Nova Galactic component, you can always head uh, over to this planet Titan to get it. Okay, another location which I believe will have the component that I'm looking for would be in this system, Cheyenne. Cayenne, which is in Aquila City. City.
and Aquila City is part of the Freestar Collective. So which means that it will have uh, the component from the Freestar Collective uh, government, which is the Stroud Eklund and also Hope Tech and also Slayton Engineering. Anything I can help you with? You should inspect your ship for okay, okay, no problem. Let's just see. What we'll be looking for is this reactor. Please, please have it. Yes, they have it. All right. So it's not a cheap reactor, but it is. Uh, and the reason that I prefer this over SF40 is because of that. Look at the hull number. There. It says 1950. That is almost 2000 with the repair rate of almost 5.8. But the power generated is just 36, which is okay, right? Because we want to be having or building a ship which is very, very tanky and can take a lot of damage. So the reactor is there. And then we'll do gonna be looking for second uh, very important component, which is the gravity drive. And this is, in fact, uh, the very best in the game, J52. But the problem with this uh, uh, gamma drive is that it, even though it says the jump thrust is up to 50, the maximum that you can jump from one planet to another planet is just 30. So it doesn't make sense to get 50. And it is also very heavy at the mass of 154. So most likely, I'm just going to go for something like this, which is, you know, graph drive help at 218 anything above 200 is good okay but let's see other option aha uh -huh. this one looks even better it's not too expensive but it has a help of 275 right because if you compare this to this it's like <laughs> almost 30k different so i'm just gonna take this one okay so it's a uh, Flom Slayton Aerospace, right? So we have the graph drive now, and we also have the reactor. So the next one would be for defense would be the shield. Okay, and for this particular purpose, let me just uh, just show you this. All right, this is the shield that we would want to use, Assurance SG eighteen hundred, which offer shield max help of 1600 with a regenerate of five percent five percent means that it, it it will regen regenerate very fast but i think what's more important is that it has 1006 of health before uh it fails so this is in fact the highest uh help in the entire game so we have the shield we have the reactor now what we need next is be let me see course we need fuel so for this i just gonna get something which is huge like this one because you have a very powerful gravity drive now but you will also need a huge fuel tank okay so let's just put it aside so now let's just uh, start dismantling this ship again okay just put this part aside first the landing gear okay now okay we're just gonna start from scratch there so we're just going to be looking at the habitat module now and like I mentioned just now at this location you're going to get from uh, Hoptech, Stroud and also Tayo okay so but I always prefer to use Stroud and the first thing that I'm going to select will be this Stroud control station which will allow me to have an additional crew of three total now i gonna need at least four crew for my ship okay so that's pretty much done there 
and I'm just gonna put it here. And the next one would be I always like to have so this uh, workshop. Okay. So now we have the workshop central habit habitat module and also the crew station control station okay and i would also gonna change the let me see uh focus something oh they don't have it so i just probably gonna buy it somewhere else later Gonna need a huge cargo as well. Preferably something that is over 1000. Ah, uh, no, it's not available here. So I just. Ah, yeah, this one. So this one provides 1480 of cargo space, which is uh, quite good. Now let's just start assembling the ship. Okay. And bear in mind, this ship build will be focusing on function rather than looks. So it will probably look uh, terrible, but the whole purpose of it is to have something which is dependable. Okay. And I'll prefer to try to make it a bit narrow. So this is. This, yeah rather than okay and let me see the bay yes uh, this one looks better so I'm just gonna delete this this is hoptech landing bay and the reason I prefer this one is that because it would allow for weapon mounting now that we have it just put it like this I can't attach it because uh, I'm just probably going to need another habit habitat module here on top which will be uh, something nice uh, perhaps uh, all in one bird That's pretty much uh, how it's going to be assembled for now. Okay, put the cargo there. Okay. Just put this here. The gravity drive will be inward because I don't want it to get hit uh, enemy fire. So now, what we're gonna do is that we're just gonna add the engine. Okay. You would notice that at this point of time, because we are using this uh, Class C reactor, right? You would uh, typically people would use uh, Class C engine as well. But for this build, I would be using Class A engine instead. And the reason for that is simple. So let me explain. If you use something like a class C engine like this, right? You would notice that the speed, top speed is reduced to 130. So even though it is powerful, but it is also very heavy and slow. And if you use class B, something like this, right? The speed is 140. Not fast enough. And it is also heavier. Okay. But, so we're gonna need something like a class A engine from Slayton Engineering like this okay and the good thing about this engine is that because if you look at the uh, let's have a look there at the max power it says it require it will occupy only two so which means that I can use six of it instead of just maximum of four so let's just put six of it this is not a cheap engine, okay? So that's why 
that perk of uh, getting a discount is very important. With 20% discount, it is still very expensive. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, let's just assemble the engine. Okay, the first engine will be sitting here. And the second engine. Sitting there. The third engine will be there. The fourth engine there. The fifth engine. But I think the engine need to be a bit higher up because it's touching the ground now. Let's just adjust it. Okay. Like that. Done. Okay. You notice that there's a hollow space here. There's a reason for it because we're going to sandwich our shield there. Okay. And why I'm putting it there is that because, you know, during combat, you don't want the shield to get direct hits. So, the more hidden it is, the better it is. It will survive uh, longer. And we can do this. So, it will be not be uh, too long. So it's still okay. Yeah. So I can probably add another habitat module. Not sure if this is. Hmm. So a bit of balance issue here. And. This will be the thing that make this ship kind of a bit unique. From structure perspective, I'll be making this uh, ship some sort of a B-wing B -wing configuration, which means that the six engine will be pushed to the side. And there's a reason for it, which I will explain later. So this is a bracer. Four of them. Okay. Oh, oh, it's hanging. Okay. Sorry about that. I thought it was hanging just now because it was like the screen freeze for a moment. Okay. Still, it is still here. So you notice that? The sixth engine is being pushed all the way here to this part. Okay. And in fact, I'm just going to do this. some arrangement here and there okay like that. and perhaps this would be best place for the cargo yeah, as the bracer so now we have our shield fully covered okay Now, how about the rest of the configuration of the habitat module? Should I do this? Hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I need some space underneath for the... For the landing gear. So it will be like this. Yeah. So it's gonna be a bit longer, but it's okay. Put our wing here. And the landing gear will be here. Let's just have a look how it looks like. Okay. Let's just add some aesthetic to make it looking a bit presentable. This is my favorite part here, which is Stroud Eklund uh, cowling. Okay. And what to do with the so many empty space here? see perhaps I can do it like this this one will be on top so that the ship will not be too long yeah I think better that way okay Now we just need to fill in the empty spaces. Perhaps I can do this as well. Use a cowling here. Hmm, I'm not sure I like the look of it. Perhaps to more to the front. Yeah. I think it makes more sense like this. Okay. Starting to look a bit more sensible now. And what is this? Yeah, I still need the control station to be here. Okay. And I don't think I have space for this anymore. Can I do this? It's gonna be a bit weird. So I just have to make a way with this and add something which is shorter. Uh, we can use this. Uh, yeah, Sprout companion way. And we have enough space to use this. Uh, Docking module, which is uh, located at the front. Now, yeah. Now we are talking. Okay. So, you notice here, pretty much at this point, this ship already have over two thousand hull, which means that this ship is very very fatty, <laughs> and it has a shield of uh, one thousand six, very high. And cargo 1007, which is more than enough for my usage. And it has 30 light year jump range with a mobility of 100. And this mobility of 100 is very, very important because for combat, you want a very agile and responsive ship. Okay. So now what's missing is would be the weapon. Okay, I think I'm just going to do this. Shift this up. Look a bit more sensible now. Okay. We just worry about the final look later. Just focus on the... Now, weapon. Okay. So... 
the ship will be using a lot of this uh, weapon here. I hope they have it here. Oh no. I think probably that one will need to be purchased somewhere else. Because the kind of weapon that I want is not available in this uh, location. It is in uh, United Colonies uh, region. But perhaps I can do a bit of aesthetic here by... Putting some cowling. Okay, this thing. Does it look sensible now? I think I can be happy with that. So there we still have these empty spaces here, which is not a big deal. And we can change this to something else. Like that. Okay. For the sake of looks. Okay. What else? The only thing that's missing right now is just weapon system. Right. Yeah, perhaps I can add uh, some fuel tank. Additional fuel tank. Yeah. That will be nice. Put it underneath there. So that I can delete this. Now, okay, just a bit of color. I always prefer the ship to look a bit darker. Mm -hmm. Not bad, not bad. Like I say, the focus of this build is not for looks, it's purely for function. Okay, before we go to the next uh, location to buy our weapon, I'm just gonna get the last uh, component which is this equipment plate because this thing is not available in United Colonies you can only buy in uh, Freestar Collective Territory so I might as well add another one okay Let's just confirm this and head to our next location. So far, it will be costing 300k. Okay, so which means that she will have 86k left. Which I think should be enough to buy her the weapon that she need. Alright, let's just head over here. Let's just have a quick look. How does the ship look like? Okay, so this is the front, the docking. And this is the crew location area. And this is the workshop. Okay. And the top part would be the frontier original habitat module. No place to sleep. And we have Vasco here standing in the middle. <laughs> I hope uh Bertha will fix it later. Well, well. Look who decided oh, to join the world. Vasco, why do you have to stand there?
orbital insertion completed. Okay, let's just have a quick test for speed. So this ship is very fast, despite being uh, way larger than the original Frontier. Okay, and let's just have a look here. Okay, you would notice that even though the reactor was uh, leveled at 36 earlier on, but the effective uh, power given by this uh, ship now is at 42. Alright, and most importantly, the shield is at maximum at 2880, right, with 30. And look at the hull here, it's over 2000. So this ship should be very very tough the reason that i had that sort of uh, she have that sort of <coughs> power is because she had she invested into this uh, particular skill here which is again something which you can upgrade all right make sure it's upgraded to rank 4 because it will add five extra unit of power and also by having this vasco as your crew member Vasco will help to add another one right that is why despite being like Vasco standing in the middle there I just can't get rid of him <laughs> I need him so let's just fly back to Alpha Centauri because I believe the weapon that I want is sold in Jemison. Hope that we have enough credit left hey, uh, to, to buy the weapon. The local chunks this time never agrees with my stomach. Okay, no problem. Come on, please. In particular, I'll be looking for this. Uh, let's see if he have it. A particle turret. Yes, there it is. And there's a reason why I like this uh, particle turret. You see the range? It's, it shoots quite a distance at 3005. Where else most other weapon, okay, especially particle weapon, shoots at around 3000. Okay. It may have a bit more of power and a bit more expensive as well. But what I need is something which offer Firing rate of at least 4 with a range of 3005. And the reason that uh, I always prefer particle weapon because it gave uh, it gives equal number of hull and shield damage. So we're just gonna need four base. Okay, not bad. Uh, we still have another 40k to spend for secondary weapon so let's just sort out this weapon first okay the first array of the turret will be facing to the front so which means that it must be facing to the front like this I'm just gonna put it here So that's our front offensive weapon and we need to give it an assignment okay so as you can see here it's already maxed out 
right so that's our front weapon and we just gonna get a secondary turret for the def rear defense so this is something which is uh, I prefer to get something with max power of 4 something a bit stronger Let's see if they have it. It will be a particle turret as well. Neutron turret. Max power of 4. Come on. Where is it? Hmm. Oh, this is laser turret. It doesn't offer much of... Uh, I prefer not to use laser because it's only good at destroying a uh, shield or perhaps I can just and it have to be different from the the first four because uh, if you use the same type of uh, turret it will always be grouped together and I don't want them to be grouped together so this one looks good 3005 but it's the firing rate is kind of a bit slow Need something a bit faster. And with a bit of range as well. I wish I can use all this, all four, eight of it, but it's okay. Just have to make do of it. Now, this one looks interesting. Hmm use this one probably I just need three of it so the location of this one will be facing to the rear like that because if you're playing very difficult uh, difficulty game you, you're gonna get chased okay <laughs> there's no way of like you know avoiding getting chased by the enemy okay wow look at the budget 85k <laughs> literally spent everything but the good news is that everything that you see here is all under 400k still literally so let's just uh, equalize the color all right i think i can be happy with this perhaps uh, just a bit of adjustment so that it will look a bit presentable let's just add some bracer here underneath okay does it look like in fact what I'm gonna do is just switch this one to the front thing two should be enough as a deterrent rather than pull uh, assault so that I have five turret facing to the front and two facing to the rear okay just add the final touch to it right 
so that will look, have that menacing look. Okay. All right. We are done. I'm happy with the look. Like I say, it probably you know will not look pretty, but. That's not the whole purpose of the ship. Okay, so something wrong. What is wrong? Oh! Not enough credit. I think need to just forget about this one. Yeah. Just need to assign. Yeah, well, you know what? It, it doesn't matter which assignment it is. Why is it still saying error? Weapon? Okay. Because these are automated turret, meaning that you don't have to shoot. It will automatically shoot for you. Let's just complete this. And let's see how much credit she has left. <laughs> 127, which is fine. That's the whole idea of this thing, to spend all her credit on the ultimate ship. this baby out. And yes, of course Vasco is standing there. Nothing much can be done about it now. First test would be this. Let me just check this. She does have a bounty mission to destroy a crimson fleet at Martin. But I'm not sure whether this it's a level 70. Ah, should be high level. But she need to travel here first. Oh, no. Okay. Travel to Newton. Power up the Gravity drive. Must have been a good jump. We're still in one piece. Thank you, Sarah. And it is good to have Sarah uh, as part of the crew because she offer quite a lot of uh, benefit uh, as part of the crew. Okay, now let's head over to Bardeen. Bardeen is a level 70 planet, so it is high level. the ship it handles beautifully despite being rather large it has mobility of a small ship okay let's power up her weapon okay 
Where is it? It's here. Look at that, alright, automatically shooting. That is a level 38. There's a few ship here. Okay, when you hear that somebody uh, targeting using a missile, just okay. Wow, done. <laughs> All three ships gone. That was fast. And remember, this is on very hard difficulty. Okay, that was fast. Which means that the guns were shooting even when the ship was, uh, you know, doing evasive maneuver. Very happy with that. Let's try uh, something else. One of my favorite location. If you love uh, doing a lot of ship combat, head over to Serpentis, the home world of Baroon Zealots. Okay, power up the weapon again. Level 24. This should be a fast one. Done. Okay. That was just like 5 seconds. Let's just uh, keep on looking for higher level ships. That should be a lot here. The good thing about using this automated turret is that you can focus on Manu. No okay, I just Our gonna. Full of the I just gonna ignore that. Sanctum. No time for that. Just level 38, not high enough. But I think you get the idea. This ship is very effective, no? very efficient. Let's just head over to another location. Disable this quest first. So that. Okay. Anybody home? Come on. That's the irony of this game. When you're looking for a fight, they're not showing up. But when you least expect it, it happens. <laughs> uh, 
come on. Nobody home? Yeah. Oh, level 56. This is a good one. Two high level ship. Jeez. Just be mindful of the shield. Okay. Done. If this fight were to be done with the original frontier in the stock setting, the frontier will get destroyed within 5 seconds and let me just uh, demonstrate to you why this ship has been designed as a B-wing with that extension there the whole idea is that you know when under fire especially if the enemy is right at the back at the rear or at the front their fire will they try to always focus on middle so see that they are shooting at the middle which have the least amount of use thrusters Luton chase thrusters again chase thrusters again don't let them get away because if they get away, they will perform repair. Done. Okay, so let's just collect some stuff because she need her credit back. Okay, let's keep on moving. I'm hoping that, you know, to encounter level 75 ship. level ship which is good Ooh. evasive maneuver try to move to the okay done there you have it she even have new <laughs> alright I'm very very happy with this result. This ship now can literally take on anything. Anything. Alright, so that's about it. Let's just uh, have a final look at the ship. Forty two power with a crew of six, shield two thousand eight. Particle damage of primary weapon at 111 and particle damage from the secondary weapon at 98 and uh, in fact depending on your choice if you have more credit you can actually invest in more powerful gear weapon right which at this point of time would push the ship price way above half million but that's not the purpose of this video the purpose of this video is that to show that you can still build a ship at under half million precisely at around 390k okay 
which can take on anything end game content we are not talking about you know uh, normal difficulty or hard difficulty but on very hard difficulty this is the ship for it alright thank you for watching and please stay tuned to my channel and hopefully I'll be doing another video on how this ship will be taking on Crimson Fleet entire squadron at the key when I'll be doing uh, her to do the Crimson Fleet uh, quest bye